What is up everybody? Welcome back to Real Fresh Fishing. I am Captain Zach Freeman, owner and operator of Real Fresh Fishing down here in Key West, Florida. And before you guys get on my case, I know I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. This has been two, three weeks with no videos, but I've got good reasoning behind that. Uh, as you can see behind me, a little different starting point. I moved my boat from Key's Fresh Seafood there in Stock Island to the old Murray Marine, which is beach weekend now. Uh, still in Stock Island within three minutes of each other, but I actually got, I got a slip over here that is a dry slip so I could pull my boat out of the water rather than having a bottom paint it. You know, I was at that point where I was either, either having to bottom paint the boat or, or move to a different location. So that's what we did. And not only that, we made a upgrade here. I went from those 150 Mercs to the 225. So, another reason why I was not able to film and get something out for you guys. So, deepest apologies. Hope you guys don't hate me. Um, so today, now, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go try to find bait first, and we're probably gonna keep it simple. Uh, I've been running a decent amount of charters and yesterday was pretty tough so we'll probably keep it pretty simple here we'll probably just bridge fish we'll go do some glorified bridge fishing see if we get some big mangies and stuff tricky here right by the bridge it's actually where I want to fish but uh current's pushing through here I'm not tall enough to get under it so we gotta stay on those throttles doing it by yourself is not fun we uh the bait was an absolute mission to get to today I got probably maybe 50 pieces in there and not enough to live chum with and, and stuff that I, I'd actually like to do here at the bridge but we're going to make it work with what we got. Um, I'm going to drop the chum in. As usual, give it some time. Let that chum work. Let those fish get active. Let them get acclimated to the back of the boat. And we'll start fishing. So with the water being as cold as it is, snappers are finally starting to come up and eat. I mean, we're only in seven, eight feet of water right here on this. It's a very well-known bridge right here on US-20. You can hear the cars. I don't know if you can see them. There's somebody back there fishing behind me. Um, I'm gonna go down all the way to 12 pound fluorocarbon just because I want to make it a little bit of a sport and see if we get some bigger bites. My main target here is the gray snapper, the mangrove snapper. They're really good for you to eat. Don't do that at home. Hey, put up a good little fight. Angry snapper. Uh, get this tied up. Probably give it a couple more minutes. I really want to get those, at least the smaller snappers, to come and eat closer towards the bag and not eat so far back. Uh, that kind of tells you a lot. When the, those little ones are up at the bag chewing, the bigger ones are back there feeding as well. So we try to try to wait it out and get those things going just right before we start fishing. You could always fish too early. Pretty much can never fish too late. So. Get back to you when we put the first bait in.
with my first bait on. I'm trying to use a hook that matches the size of the bait. I'm not trying to go with this giant hook so that bait can't swim. I want that bait to look like a free piece of food back there. Or a free piece of filter that got lost. I don't I don't want it to look obvious. Not the right size, so we're gonna let this one go. mangrove snapper if they're not 12 I, I don't like keeping them that 10 inch filet of that guy right there that's nothing that's not even a snack so see if we can get it Tried to do something that did not involve coming out here in the waves, but I'm frustrated. It's been like that for a couple days here. The water, water temp is at 65 right here. So I know it's even colder in the shallower water that I was in. <clears throat> so had to brave it and come out here and try to get something done. Yellowtail, we will take him. It's like nothing wants to come up off the bottom when it's really cold like that. Our normal winter temp, you know, the water is mid to low 70s. We've had such cold weather though this year. Kind of changed things up on us. Fish aren't used to it. Oh, this 
fall down. Not what we were looking for. That's what happens when the tide slacks off. Whole lot of time for that. That was a small chicken Whole lot of time for that thing to sink rather than getting pulled by the current. And uh, of course, all the snapper and stuff really don't want to fight either. we can today. back to the dock and show you guys how I clean these snapper. All right guys, so we're back here at the dock and we're gonna fillet up this mangrove snapper. You're gonna go against all his scales there. Makes a nice easy cut. Spin him around. And then I like to slide down the backbone from the head. Take that nice and tight all the way up into a spine there. And this cut I'm making, I don't go through the rib cage, I go above it and just hit the pin bones. Really saves your knife. You keep cutting those rib cages, you, your knife will dull out real quick. I'm taking the tail. Press it tight to the skin, slide it nice and through, and all snappers have pin bones. There's a few bones there, and it runs right along that bloodline. Oh, you see if it runs right along that bloodline there. It only goes back about that full stomach area. Me personally, I take a little bit more. Try to knock some of that bloodline out of there. You ever bite into a fish and you got a taste of bait? That's what it's from, it's from that bloodline. So in all honesty, before I'll cook it, I'll actually take all that off because I'm very, very picky on what, about what I eat. But that's your filet, nice and done. Pat it dry, let it fry. Do the other side as well, like I said, against. the scales right down the back and we take the top take those pin bones out or cut over the pin bones and not into that rib cage save your blade See how much extra you get here when you go behind that rib cage? It's still all good, usable meat right there. 
little bit of back fat the healthy snapper. And that there are your two fillets. So guys, that's going to be it for this week. Um, I know this isn't the greatest episode in the world, but what I was able to do with the weather I was given. Um, what I have in store coming up when I get the right weather window. I'm going to make another golf run and the Kobe have been around. So I want to get you a good Kobe episode. And then since I didn't get you guys uh, a video from the Kingfish tournament, I am probably going to do a day down there trolling uh, big baits in that same area where I got that bigger fish so you guys can see how we do that as well. So, as usual, I, I you know what? I take it back. It's the whole see you next Wednesday thing. Been kind of tough for me between weather and all that. So, the next Wednesday that I do post, see you guys. Thank you.